Next on Rugby Wrap-Up, a Major League Superstar mystery guest, plus Dan Power, Matt McCarthy, and Brian Ray on all things Major League Rugby. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pump, and Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Everybody and welcome back to this week's rugby wrap up major league rugby edition with major league pundits in Brian Ray and Dan Power. I'm Matt McCarthy in New York City. Thank you for joining us once again. And, and what a weekend we had co- across the board, though, right? With the with the big loss by the Giltinis in Houston. Oh, but let's let's start with the first one first. Old Glory going into Atlanta, and again Atlanta showing no signs then of any drama affecting the team. No, and we kind of predicted this, didn't we? Like the galvanization around the, the turmoil in round one, we'll see as the season progresses, but a little slow out of the gates. I wasn't sure if it was old glory causing that or whether Atlanta just a little rusty. Uh, but I think that individual try from Austin White near near the, the halftime break kind of opened the floodgates and boy, oh boy, they came out in the second half. And Stephen Brett, he, he was there last year but his fingerprints were all over that second half performance. It wasn't the Atlanta of 2021. They were expansive. They were playing in layers. They were moving the ball really well. They looked really, really good on attack. So it's, you know, again, reactive league, right? They saw what LA did to them in the final. And Stephen Brett's gone out and already made an impact round one against Old Glory, who looked uh, looked very lost. Look at the depth that ATL has on that team, bringing in, uh, you know, Minter and in Keys and Reese and Deacon off the bench. And you just, you don't see that kind of depth with Old Glory. So it's just tough for them. I thought uh, Joaquin de la Vega Mendia, first game, first professional game ever. He's never played for the Jaguars or anything like that. 23 points, eight for eight off the kicking tee. Bautista Escura, who? This kid looks impressive. But uh, de Bullis, you know, the uh, Penn State grad, American at number 10, he was floating around at wing and fly half. You can play around in the back line, a nice pickup. He needs to polish up aspects of his game, but a young American 10 to have a game like that in, in realistic, I think that might be his first or maybe second start at 10. Uh, just let him develop. I know Gary Gold will probably be excited to see you know, the performance he put out there on Saturday as well. Speaking of balls in hand, how about going down to Austin where it was freezing the Dallas had to be freezing their jackals off in their debut. I think we kind of expected this result. I mean, to be honest, I think we're going to see a lot more from Austin this season. They weren't quite firing in all cylinders in that one. But, I mean, Dallas, uh, they've got an issue in the tight five, I think. Uh, we saw their scrum get totally dismantled. They don't really have an experienced tight head prop on that team. They had Ryan Bauer the, from the, the premiership playing at loose head. Uh, I mean, which, to be fair, is his normal position. They don't have uh, Rory O'Connor, the Australian prop over yet. So, you know, I, I think they got to figure out something there. They might have to bring in a lock as well. Uh, you know, they just got some some problems in that pack. If they don't, you know, win their own first phase ball, they're going to have a hard time putting points on the board. I was going to say, it didn't take long for Julian Dominguez to uh, stamp himself as sign of the year, just tossing Dallas Jackals around like they were children. Uh, brilliant stuff. How about 7-3, though, Jackals? Early on, I was like, well, hang on a second. What's going yeah. on here? And then 40 points later, uh, we, we got what we expected to get. You got that back line again. You, we mentioned Lawrence, Dominguez. You got Marco Keefe, who is running inside and in traffic like he's a man possessed. And also Bryce Campbell and Marcel Brocky. Not a bad back line. And we'll be right back with our mystery guest after this. I've been blind since I was four. And I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. What do you think is on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig & Whistle, on West 36th Street. Hey guys, it's that time of the week 
where we have our mystery guests, where you two try to decide or guess who our mystery guest is. You get three questions each, and the mystery guest will answer his questions. Mystery guest, can you hear us? Yeah, it's glad to be here, man. Excellent, mystery guest. So I'm going to start with Brian Ray. Brian, you have a question for our mystery guest. Are you from South Africa? Yeah, man. Hong Kong. Mystery guest, are you Hong Kong Kermishais? Nah, man. <laughs> Brian, do you have a question for our mystery guest? It's your second question. Are you a player on a Western Conference team? Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Dan, question number two. Did you miss last year because of injury? Nah, I don't think so. Uh, did you play this past weekend? No. Nah. No, I don't think so. You're, you're a player? Current player? No, I'm not a player. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Uh, are you a, uh, a coach of a team that has New England in it? Nah. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna have to we're gonna go to the bonus round. Dan. Yeah, was the team that you're involved with in the playoffs last year? Nah. Are you associated with the uh, Toronto Arrows? Oh. Nah, sorry, man. Oh, I, I, I will say he's with the Western Conference. Uh, are you uh, associated with uh, the team who plays at the field that is in Gordon Stan's background, i.e. the Houston Sabercats? Yes. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. I'm so sorry you had to sit through this. My apologies. Ding, this ding, ding. Hard. Let's bring him in. There he is. A round of applause. I'm good with accents and I'm not good with this. So, uh... <laughs> That was perfect. That was absolutely perfect, sir. You, you and taking the time out. We first of all, we are we are flattered. We're not worthy. We are humbled by Mr. Heineke Meyer coming on with us right now, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely brilliant. And for the folks at home that might be in a in a coma, let me just give them your 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 resume. Extensive, ex excellent resume. Of course, head coach of the Springboks in 2015's World Cup, but also. Time with the Stormers, Blue Bulls, Leicester Tigers, Asia Pacific Dragons, Stade Francais, and the University of Pretoria. Now, these two stunned uh, panel experts are going to help me ask you some questions. But first off, congratulations on that huge win against the Giltinis. The Giltinis, uh, they were probably, were they underestimating you guys? Yeah, first of all, the quality side. Um, you know, we really... Uh... It's a very short preseason, so we always knew it's going to be a tough game. But I'm very proud of our guys. You know, um, you know, first up, it's always difficult for them playing the team that's from the lock. But uh, yeah, um, sometimes it goes your way. I thought we were well prepared, and uh, just it just get more and more uh, difficult going forward. But uh, you have to have your lucky breaks. But again, they're a quality side, and uh, we just humble and thankful for the win. Well, I got to tell you, not only was this a great win for the Sabercats, but it was a great win for Houston, the city, and for the league. I mean, right out of the gate, everybody left you guys for dead. But how 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 much of a culture change is there now? Yeah, you know, we said I say to the players, and again it's out and out the team effort. Uh we said I don't mind it, you know, I don't mind about the score. Uh obviously we read nobody gave us a chance and I've always liked to be an underdog. So we just said this year, you know, we're going to go out there and make our supporters proud. And um, Houston need a great side. And uh, I think it's a great uh, testimony to the league because every, every team is going to be better this year. We knew that. And, you, could, you know, I've watched most of the games. So it's going to be very, very tough. Oh, absolutely F fabulous. And, and, and it was great to see. Glad to be wrong. I'll, I'll put my hand up, Coach. And, and again, I was one of the guys that said probably didn't see you guys coming out of the gate and getting a win on the weekend and, and happy to be proven wrong there. Mate, tell us a little bit about the story of you actually getting involved with Houston. The Bulls were successful, and then obviously I, I achieved everything except winning the World Cup that I wanted to. And uh, I thought I'm going to take a long break out of rugby. And then uh, when the ownership got a hold of me, uh, I've always coached to make a difference. You know, it's uh, I've been in Europe, could have gone to Europe, but I like new things. And uh, when Mike spoke to me about what I want to do at, at Houston, first of all, I, I like people and like to make a difference. And... I saw we were in the same wavelength and they want to build something special. And I thought, well, I'd give it one more go. And I really believe that uh, America is the future of rugby. I truly believe it. It's not a PR exercise. Uh, if you see what rugby's done in Japan, how they grew. So I thought it'd be a great chance to be here, uh, you know, make a difference, start, start small and, and, and build something special and, and make a difference in American rugby. I've always been about that. And I'm really excited to be here. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, people of Houston's been great. American rugby's been great for me. So I really enjoy that time, yeah. 
I really enjoyed it, Tommy, so far. You know, when the opportunity was first presented to you, had you seen any much or, or any of Major League Rugby beforehand? I mean, what were your, your impressions then and kind of uh, how are they now after this opening weekend? So I was actually semi-retired, sitting there close to the beach and, uh, you know, looking down, looking on the beach when, when they phoned me. Um, but again, a lot of the South African players start playing here. I know Gary Gold, he's been around. Previously, I've spoken about maybe, you know, being involved in American rugby in the long term. So I didn't know that much, but uh, the more I start speaking to them, you know, I like big challenges. I think this is an awesome challenge, especially being in Houston. And then especially to help the American team as well. You know, for me, it's not, it's American team and we have to build American rugby. I'm all for that. And it's exciting for me that maybe the world can, can come to America. So I've, I've watched not as much as I used to. I just took a break after Paris, just want to get a break away from rugby, which I've, I've coached since I was uh, 20 and professional since I was 27. So I knew something going good here. And then when I did my research, I was very excited, especially about Houston. Well, you got to be thrilled about the start. And and now, you know, you've opened the eyes across the league now. So this Houston Sabercats team is like not likely to sneak up on anybody, but I don't think you're going to have to. It looks like you guys have some firepower in that lineup. Yeah, I still, you know, it's, uh, it's easy the first game. You know, people don't know much about you. So it will get more and more difficult. I think it's... The standard what I watch, I watched every single game just before I came uh, on video. And the standard I've seen in the first round is really impressive. I think it's great for rugby. It's, 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 every team is recruited well. So it's easy to win the first game. I think consistency is great. And we don't have a big squad, so uh, it will be a challenge going forward. So we play New York at home and they're quality side, you know, they've been in the, in the, in the, in the semi-final. So we have to, we have to improve on, on this before. Performance, definitely. A couple of the veterans, really Brits, certainly impressed on the weekend. You know, was it hard to, to sell any of these guys on, on making the move to Major League Rugby at all? Like, was it was it difficult doing that? No, you wouldn't believe me. First of all, obviously, guys in South Africa are spoiled. They're used to big salaries and stuff. But I think what what MLR got and what America got is, you know, that they've got hope. And there's a lot of kids out in the world all over that, that doesn't get chances. So it wasn't difficult to sell it, especially going to Houston. And I didn't know any of these players. It's, uh, it's most young players because a lot of the top players obviously go to Europe. It wasn't a difficult sell. You need some experience and then some young players. But what excites me is there's so many unbelievable athletes in America. That really excites me. So uh, if you look at a few of the guys that played now, it was former you know, HTX players that didn't play professional rugby. And we've, we've played two or three of them already. And we've got one or two crossover athletes with unbelievable athletes so we can put in great coaching that you know a lot of these guys can play for america and that excites me out of those domestic guys or even those draft picks who's really jumped off the page for you uh in terms of the american talent that you think maybe hasn't been in gary gold's squad yet but potentially could be an eagle moving forward yeah it's a pity uh, uh, emmanuel albert's still injured uh he had an operation just before the you know just before he came over uh i think he's good enough to play for for america it's gonna take a year or two uh, we've got a guy, Pono Davis, played for, for, for Glendale. Um, he's been playing rugby for three months, but what I've seen there is, you know, he's, he's really brilliant. He can be a great player. Uh, obviously, guys like Christian Dyer's really play at a high level, but, you know, uh, uh, Marco Nafe is, is still injured, but I think he can be a superstar. He just needs to understand. He's been struggling with Achilles, um, you know, Matai. Uh, it's a little bit different with Sevens, not taking on the line. Uh, he's really been impressive. Uh, but again, for me, it's like, I think the forwards, I think the forwards, uh, especially as guys that same attributes that we got back home, big physical specimens, um, you know, Aaron Mitchell is a guy. I think what makes it difficult is a lot of these guys is not used to off season. So you only start January, you've got two weeks, you play a game. That's not ideal. We can put these guys on super programs where they get super fit. Um, there's a lot of great forwards here. You know, uh, Kenny has been great. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of, uh, um, like I said, great athletes, but uh, I've been impressed by the, you know, by, especially by Pono Davis as well. What are your expectations? What, what would you say is a successful season for the Sabercats this season? You're not going to win every single game. Uh, even the Goldini's lost two games last year, but I do expect these guys to work hard in the off season or in, you know, for game day. And I, and I do expect them to put their bodies on the line. I don't mind if they make mistakes. But just to improve every single game and go out there in every single game and, and make our supporters and themselves proud. And then the scoreboard will take care of itself. And finally, before we let you go, do you have a favorite moment in your career in rugby? I mean, every, every time our, our team goes out and puts a smile on, on especially the kids' face and, and kids joining rugby, for me, that is, that's what sport's all about. If we can make a difference in somebody's life out there that's really struggling and because of the way we play and because of rugby and show them that you can get back from setbacks, 
that's more important than trophies for me. You know, I just want the guys to be enjoy what they do and and, and be role models. That is, that was just a commercial for Global Rugby right there. If I've ever heard one in my life, that was awesome, co- uh, Coach. I keep calling you Coach. I'm sorry. I just you can you can, you can call me whatever. That fixated in sure. my head. I'm just you know I'm I'm just I'm a deer in the headlights right now, so to speak. But I want to thank you for coming on, taking the time, and having some fun with the guys. Much appreciated, and we're looking forward to seeing more Saber Cats wins this year. Thanks for having me. It's great being here. And sorry, guys, I'm not good with I'm not a good. Uh, I don't have You're great. Good- I'm not good with accents, so I don't like tricking you guys, but it's, it's been an honor being on the show. And uh, we've got something good here, not just hopefully in, in Houston, but I think with the MRR, I really believe that uh, America can really push hard going forward in rugby, and, and world rugby needs that. That's just great. Thank you again, sir. Much appreciated. Don't go away. We'll be right back with more Major League Rugby after this. Selling or trading in your vehicle? She makes it easy. With Easy Trade, start online or visit us in store. We want your vehicle and we'll give you up to 125% of KBB value. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. With Dan Power and Brian Ray, I'm Matt McCarthy. The next one, New England showing some grit on the road. Yeah, uh, you know, I picked Nola to win this one. I was a little bit disappointed uh, in their performance, I have to say. Uh, I think uh, Robbie Coleman's probably going to want to move past that performance pretty quickly. I'm sure he, you know, would have aspire to something a little bit better. I mean, he's a much better player than, than he showed in that game. Uh, you know, maybe a bit of rest for them as well. Uh, only the one game in the preseason, but so did the Free Jacks. I thought the Free Jacks defense was tremendous. They put huge uh, pressure, especially on the breakdown. Good line speed as well. Uh, they, they they looked all right, you know. And, and Bud and Waka, hey, playing at number 10, slice through. He had a part to play and I think every try they scored. So uh, great start for him as well. So, uh, hey, Free Jacks played better better than I expected. Uh, great game for them. So again, maybe maybe it's that Julian Dominguez factor, you know, that X factor at the back there that they had last year where you could just make something happen. And I just never felt like they threatened uh, New England, who defended exceptionally well, but I just didn't look like they had much in the attacking front. So Carlos Spencer, uh, wherever you are, I think they're going to need some of the the King's magic. All right, moving up the turnpike, if you will, Utah served notice again in a loss that they will not go quietly into the night and made Vegas go crazy with two late tries, almost pulling off an improbable victory. They just ran out of time, 31-29, Brian. Yeah, a tale of two halves for both teams, maybe. Not much really going on for either in the first half. I mean, it looked like they were both stuck in preseason. I mean, you could probably say that about a lot of the teams this weekend. But, uh, you know, a second half, all of a sudden, everything, uh, the fireworks started going off. I think the San Diego offense started to to wake up and, uh, you know, played. uh, They looked actually not too bad, pretty sharp. But Ben Mitchell played really well for them really nice offload nice running line as well uh but then they kind of you know it looked like they thought job was done right at the end and let uh, utah get back into it that great intercept from uh, mikey teo pull up the footage of that intercept mckenna comes so quickly teo thinks he's about to tackle him he thinks he's one of the san diego players assume he kind of panics and he's like oh god give him the ball and then like a you know like a slingshot he's gone but uh, the rumor going around is that because they're playing on a parking garage, the ticket, the parking ticket warden came up at half time and was going to issue tickets because the game was so slow. So that's why they played quickly in the second half. They had to move their cars out of the parking lot so they didn't get a ticket. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah. Seattle beats Canada. Hey, uh, full credit to the Seawolves. I thought both teams played actually really well defensively. To me, this was the game of the weekend. You know, it might not be, you know, the most high scoring or whatever, but as far as, you know, standard of rugby played and and just uh, the contact, this one to me looked, the most like you know a regular season should uh, game should the the intensity out there uh and you know just mistakes from the arrows I, you know I, I don't mean to be too harsh on will kelly but you know fly half at the professional level is just an unforgiving position it's super tough and when you make a mistake it just blows up in your face we saw ross neal make that interception and go all the way and seattle hey they looked uh they looked pretty good i thought the game plan uh, went well and uh, those forwards uh, really took it to the arrows credit to seattle clark he's done a great job it looked like 
the old Seattle defensively. They were back in it again, using the advantage of that narrow field. They compressed the defense. They pressured a guy at 10 who hadn't had a lot of experience at 10 and forced him into some mistakes. Ryan mentioned the intercept. You take out Sam Malkin, you take out the intercept, that game's a lot closer. There's a lot of, lot of positives to take away for an undermanned Toronto on the road there. That game, I wouldn't be too worried if I'm Pete Smith or Mark Winnicott. Something any. like seven backs out or it's crazy? Yeah, yeah, it was a high, it was a high attrition rate. Um, but I tell you what, I, I, I was a little sympathetic back into the game for Ross Neal. Like uh, 80 meters has never looked so long. Yeah. When it's the end of the game, you're running. Someone, you're like, just stop chasing me. This week, a Thursday night special. Seattle welcomes in Utah, Brian. Yeah, anytime you have a short turnaround like this, it's going to be whoever recovers the fastest. Uh, Seattle's playing at home. Uh, the defense looked great. I think they looked a little bit sharper than uh, Utah did, so I'm leaning towards the Seawolves in this one. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Brian on this one. Utah probably got a little lucky. Coming back in San Diego, didn't look uh, where they need to be just yet. And I thought that defense from Seattle was quite strong. So hopefully they continue that defensive effort and get a win here over Utah. I, I agree with you guys. I think that Seattle might put the two wins in a row together. Then you've got a Friday night special. Brian Canada hosts L.A. in Langford, Vancouver. You know, I, 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 L.A. did not look super sharp. Is Gitto going to be back for this one? I don't know. I'm predicting Sam Malcolm to come back. So that's a big boost for the Arrows. Uh, given him, Sammy, the boot in there, I'm going to take the arrows in a close one to upset L.A. and set the defending champs to an 0-2 start. If L.A. are 0-2 after this, we're going to see Kurtley Beal, Quade Cooper, you know, you name it, they're all going to be on a plane to L.A. the next week. So 24 hours are going to be the difference here. L.A. in a, in a tight one up there in uh, B.C. Uh, I'm just literally picking against Toronto because of all the the injuries. And I'm thinking that Gitto is going to come back. LA is going to win that one. Then we have San Diego on Saturday versus Dallas. Dan. Legion by 50. Big win for San Diego. It's just a matter of picking the spread. I'll go by 55 just to spite Dan. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm going to say 40 because they're spelling guys. 40 point margin. That's still a lot, but Hey, it's a franchise. It's a, it's an, it's a, it's a, it's an expansion franchise. Easy for me to say folks. So let's not get down too far on the Jackals just yet. Next up, it doesn't get any easier for Old Glory. They're going into Austin. It's OG versus AG, Brian. Yeah, uh, you know, Old Glory, they just didn't, don't look like they quite have the, uh, you know, the, the horses to get it done this year. We saw it, you know, first round against ATL in that second half. They just don't have the depth. So uh, Austin looked good, and they're going to get better uh, at home, Austin, by a bunch. It's probably going to be a similar result for Austin as it was last week. I think they'll be too strong and, and too dangerous there, especially in that back line for Old Glory. I, I'm rooting for Old Glory. I think they're going to have a better performance this week. I think they found out some things about some players, but I think it's going to be Austin by at least a couple of tries. We have Houston and New York at the Cat's Meow Aviva Stadium, Brian. Yeah, kind of a tough one to call. I mean, we predicted big things for New York. But we haven't seen New York this season. Uh, their preseason did not really go as planned. You know, took a shorthanded team down to Austin and got smoked. Uh, I don't really know what kind of a lineup New York is going to have for this one. Kind of a mystery to me. So. Dan Carter. Uh, <laughs> presuming Dan Carter is not taking the field. Houston looked fired up for that game against LA. You know what? I'm going to back him after, you know, Heineken Meyer is leading this team uh, to something special this year. I'm going with the cats at home. Does Houston keep rolling here? Uh, it, this is good. This is going to be a really good one. I, I actually don't know which way to go. I'd, I'd have to look at the rosters and see if Dan Carter pops up, but you would think home field advantage initially could be enough for the Sabre cats just to edge this one out. Uh, gentlemen, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I think New York's going down there. They're going to love the fact that they're playing on grass. They, on paper, they're veterans. Uh, this is not going to be any surprise to them. And Sam Windsor, he's got something to prove to the franchise of Houston. I think New York is going to pull this one out, but it's going to be uncomfortable. And finally, from the gold mine, New Orleans welcoming in ATL the Rattlers, Dan. You know, it's been a happy hunting ground for Rugby ATL. Uh, year one, 2020, that they came in, the shortened season, they got a win down there. And I think they did the same again last year on the road down there. So uh, they looked strong against Old Glory, in particular in the second half. Nola 
not a great performance at home against New England. Uh, until I see a little differently, I'm going to actually go ATL on the road here to get an upset over New Orleans. This isn't the longest trip in the world for the Rattlers, uh, and they look good. And that Argentine fullback, whew, he was flying. So uh, I'm going to go with the, the Rattlers on the road to beat the gold. I'm also going to pick the Rattlers on the road. I think they've got that championship team, that mentality. They're strong. They've proved that they can survive the front office kerfuffle. And they are a strong team on paper, no doubt about it, with some leaders in that locker room. Atlanta prevails in this one. And on that note, guys, we are out of time. I want to thank the two of you, Brian and Dan, and, of course, our special guest, the mystery guest, Honeke Meyer, and you for tuning in. Please check out our other segments, including the Rugby Odds, showing you how to bet on all these games and get entertained at the same time, plus the college rugby wrap-up. Please sign up for our weekly newsletter. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And please, please, please check out our American Red Cross blood donor team.